So in, in banking, uh, the Swiss banks are mostly in the wealth management space. UBS, Credit Suisse, Julius Baer. Uh, and in the wealth management space, they're doing well. They're very credible. Um, and, and some of them have good uh, technology digital solutions as well. So they're also trying to evolve, uh, not uniformly, but some of them are, are cutting edge. Uh, but they're narrow. Um, so they don't do a whole range of end-to-end -end commercial uh, uh, banking, uh, if you will. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for every outside of banking as well. There's a massive opportunity in that part of the world. I mean, see, Asia, the Asian growth story from 1980 till, you know, 10 years ago, it was a, a manufacturing-driven story. So Asia was the factory of the world. And certainly Southeast Asia, where you are, China, was all the factory of the world. You pr produced and shipped goods across to Europe and the U.S. for people to buy. I think few people have still come to terms with the recognition that Asia is today no longer the factory of the world. It is the marketplace of the world. Uh, it is the marketplace of the world because Asia GDP used to be small. Today, Asia x Japan is 35% of global GDP. One third of global GDP is there. It is growing at 6% real. It's growing at 8 or 9% nominal. That means just the massive explosion of buying power in Asia uh, means that the opportunity to sell and distribute is a huge. So anybody who wants to allocate capital and not looking at riding on the Asian growth story over the next 10, 15, 20 years is really missing a big opportunity. So it's number one. Number two, Asia is short of one thing, it's short of capital. There's few savings pools in Asia, but the large capital pools are in the West. So the logical thing is capital should flow from the capital surplus areas to the massive growth demand areas. So the real opportunity for real capital, not just financial capital, but strategic capital to come into Asia, uh, to be able to bring uh, uh, ideas and solutions. Number three, while it's changing, the reality is Asia is still not at the forefront of invention, which is different from innovation. So Asia is very good at innovation, business process innovation, taking things, commercializing them, putting them to markets. And it is changing, by the way. The more patents being filed out of China today than ever before. But really speaking, a large part of invention still happens to be in mature markets, developed countries. The opportunity to bring some of these and run them solutions in Asia is also very real. So big demand, uh, capital shortage, and a need for you know, ideas and innovations. Right? You know, so there's a real opportunity for people to come in. The one mistake people make is even though I paint Asia as one Asia, there's no one Asia. So you got to understand that if you want to try and do Indonesia, it's quite different from Vietnam. It's quite different from the Philippines and very different from India. So you got to localize. Uh, and that's uh, the big thing. You have to localize adequately to be able to be relevant in the specific markets and countries you want to be in.